Hi, in this video you will learn how to use OAuth 2.0 feature in Zappis' products. Both of our products SSIS PowerPack and ODBC PowerPack support OAuth 2.0 standard. OAuth 2.0 standard can be used to communicate with your API securely. So let's get started. First, we suggest you to read this article which explains different concepts about OAuth 2.0 protocol and how to use that with Zappis' product such as grant type, tokens and redirect URI. Those concepts are explained in this URL. Okay, so once you go back, we're going to use SSIS PowerPack as our example to demonstrate this OAuth 2.0 feature. But the concepts are same so feel free to use this video to learn more about how to use OAuth 2.0 in other products. In the SSIS designer you will see control flow and data flow. But some of the components in data flow such as JSON source, XML source and CSV source they also support OAuth 2.0 standard using OAuth connection manager. For example if you drag REST API task here and let's say you're trying to communicate with the API which requires OAuth 2.0 standard you can use our OAuth connection manager so let's just get started here double click here and we're going to put our API URL here so if you see I've been yes it's gonna fail when you click test here C4 be done you it requires some sort of authorization right so for that you have to use connection and in connection we can create new connection or create choose existing one for the demo purpose we're going to create new connection so before we do that let me copy something here in the clipboard so these are the permissions we like to gr grant for our API calls okay you may be doing some read operations, write operations, you may be listing files on the Google Drive or you may be reading from spreadsheet. Depending on what operations you are trying to do in your API, make sure you refer to proper scopes. Some APIs don't even need scopes, but for example, Google requires scopes to grant permission to your API. Okay, so let's create new OAuth connection. Now on this user interface, you may see there are predefined providers. You can choose OAuth version and many other options. Uh, for if your provider is not listed in this drop down, then you can always use custom and fill out these important pieces here. Okay. sometimes you have to put the redirect URI this has to match exactly same way what you put in your app registration page if your app doesn't require callback URI then leave it blank for Google we're going to see the predefined provider Google and in this case we offer Zappis's registered app default app for ease of use but if you do not want to use this default app, you can always use your custom app. Click this URL to learn how to register your own app in Google. For this demo, let's just use default app so we don't have to go through other steps. Now I'm going to paste all the permissions I need to grant to my API. Okay, so these are the different permissions one line per permission okay you can also click select scopes and use the browser we offer but sometimes your if your scope doesn't appear here you can manually enter in this line okay so let's just click generate token now there are two different ways to generate token one is using our embedded browser like this but sometimes the embedded browser approach doesn't work during token extraction in that case you can use system default browser which we will show in a second okay so let's just click 
our account I, because I already logged in previously it was it is not showing me user ID password screen but yeah if you have to you can use your Google account credentials allow and there you go so basically it generated our token we can save this backup file and here is your access token and refresh token now assume that this approach didn't work for some reason let's say we fail to extract token in that case you will see this type of message would you like to use system default browser to extract token we can say yes And you can see the client ID and some other things are automatically appended in your URL. You can click account and because this is using full fledged browser and this app is not verified by Google, it's basically showing you this warning. But you can also say yes, continue by clicking this unsafe click link and just say uh, allow and as you see the last step is this code sometimes it appears in the URL after code equal to sign sometimes it appears here so just copy the code portion if it is using Chrome browser I, this step is automatic it automatically extracts the token uh, the code and go back to the previous screen but if you are using IE or Firefox, then you have to manually do it in some cases. So, all right, I'm going to cancel the wait process. And after that, I'm going to paste my code. And that's it. Our token extraction flow is completed. It extracted access token and refresh token. If you are not sure what is this, think like a refresh token is your master key, but you cannot use it for API calls. This master key is used to extract the temporary token, which is called access token. So every time you call APIs, access token is sent over. And access token typically expires in one hour if it is Google API. Some API may expire longer or shorter. Click test. And if this is green, that means you're, it's working completely fine. Click OK. Now let's go back. If you click test, the API should return you some data. There you go. So as you see, authorization header, it automatically pass our extracted token. And once it automatically renew this token, if token expires, so you don't have to worry about logging and that authorizing flow every time. This is all automatic now. And if you see it here bottom, yes, we indeed extracted some data from our spreadsheet. These are the cell values using our API call. That's it. So in this video, you learn how to use our uh, Zappis's OAuth feature to call your API securely using OAuth 2.0 standard. Have a great day.